Welcome back to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Jeremy Gaines here with Logan Brandis and Andrew Destin. The World Series is now over and the Los Angeles Dodgers have raised the Commissioner's Trophy. That means it's time for us to talk off-season baseball in MLB. So let's take a look at the top free agents in the market. Andrew, which prize position players are you looking at? Well, for me, it starts with George Springer. This is somebody who this year hit around 265, had 14 homers, 32 RBIs. But, you know, you look at the type of guy he was in prior seasons, MVP caliber player, hit close to 300 in 2019, and still 14 home runs in the shortened season. That's pretty good from Springer. Um, I'm looking at him going to the New York Mets, though. He's going into his age 31 season, and he's a Connecticut native. I think he heads back to New York City and doesn't go to the Yankees because they don't have the same need in the outfield. So I think Springer takes his talents to the Big Apple, goes to the Mets, goes out on Long Island, and, you know, he is 31 years old, so the Mets do have a little bit of a history of giving too big of contracts to some of those older players who maybe don't deserve that long of a deal. But I'm looking at around five years, a hundred-ish million dollars for Springer, and I think he heads off to New York. Well, I think the big ticket, big ticket item for me this offseason has got to be JT Real Muto. Going into this offseason is probably the best catcher in all of baseball. Um, had he in, in, in a short season, he hit 266 and 11 home runs, which for a catcher, hitting 11 home runs in a short season is still really good. And he's going to be asking for about $200 million, maybe a little bit over that uh, in the offseason. And I, if he, I think if he were to um, go into free agency, I still, I still do think he stays with the Philadelphia Phillies. I still think they have a lot of unfinished business there. I think the Mets look at uh, other positions of need uh, in the offseason and I do think he will go to the Phillies but I do think if he were to leave uh, the Philadelphia the Mets would be the next best option the Mets haven't had a all-star catcher since 2005 when Mike Piazza um, was wearing, wearing the black and uh, black and orange on that team but I do think he will stay in Philadelphia we have a handful of top flight pitchers available this winter who in your opinion Logan is the best starter out there well, I think Trevor Bauer is not only the biggest pitcher in free agency, but he's the biggest wild card of a free agent we've ever seen. He tweeted out a couple days ago that he's open to signing with all 30 MLB teams. Doesn't matter if you're the worst team in the league or the best team in the league. And he's even open to going to the Japanese league, as I have, I have um, as one of their destinations there. Trevor Bauer is an unpredictable man, and he'll he'll be, he'll be one in free agency. I have the Red Sox up there. He did post a picture of a plane ticket of him heading to Boston, and he's even uh, talked about going to the Houston Astros when he's just despise the Houston Astros when they were when they were um, in their cheating scandal. I do think it will be a complete bitter, bitter's war for Trevor Bauer. It will be whoever offers the most money, regardless of your win-loss record, will get Trevor Bauer. And I do think the Angels are in a position to get him. The Angels have struck out on guys like Garrett Cole uh, in the past, and I do think that they're in a market for a pitcher. They have a great, uh, great lineup with Mike Trout and Anthony Rendon. They've been looking for a pitcher, a really good pitcher, uh, for a long time. They, they had a rotation headed by Andrew Heaney and an injured Shohei Otani, so they're definitely on the market for a pitcher. So I do have Trevor Bauer going to the Angels. Plus he gets to return home. You know, he's a L.A. guy, so Trevor Bauer gets to return home in some regard. I'm looking a little bit more under-the-radar guy. He doesn't have the Twitter account that Trevor Bauer does, but Kevin Gosman, you look at the season he put up in 2020 for the Giants, you can't name a player on San Francisco that took advantage of the pandemic better than Kevin Gosman. 2019, he got DFA'd by the Atlanta Braves and totally turned himself around. Had around a 3.5 ERA, finished 3-3, three and three, and now he just got a qualifying offer from the Giants for $18.9 million. Now, whether or not he accepts that remains to be seen, but the fact that a guy who came in on a one-year deal for around $5 million now this year, he could be up to a three-year, $60 million deal, if not more. And he's only 30 years old, so Gosman was somebody who struggled with the Baltimore Orioles earlier in his career, never really found that consistency, but in 2020, he reached 2018 peak form with the Braves when he was a sub-3 ARI guy. So I look at Kevin Gosman perhaps coming back to the Giants, and if not, could going off to one of these four teams here. San Diego Padres always looking for help in their rotation, so who knows? Maybe he stays in the NL West, but either way, Gosman is somebody who really upped his stock in the pandemic. In addition to free agents, there are several stars who might be acquired through a trade. Andrew, are there any key pieces you envision being moved before next season? Francisco Lindor, here's a guy who three straight years of 30-plus home runs shortened season in the pandemic, he really wasn't at the same level. He was a sub one war guy. He was sixth on the team in war. And the reason the Indians were a 35 win team is because of their pitching. They were relying on a few key starters and Lindor really wasn't part of that equation. Yes, he's a four time all-star. Yes, he's a two time gold glover, but I don't think Lindor returns to this team. I think they're looking to send him somewhere and I'm looking at the Philadelphia Phillies. They need help at shortstop. Gene Segura is not an everyday shortstop anymore. They have to play him at second base. Didi Gregorius was just on that one year 
three-year contract, so I think they're gonna be moving on from him. Lindor could be a great guy to pick up via the trade, and he's going into his final year of arbitration, so the Indians, who we know how cheap of a franchise they are, they're looking to move on from Lindor. So I think they trade him over, get Howard and Bowman in return from the Phillies, perhaps, two coveted prospects there. So I think Lindor, look at him in the open market, or rather via the trade, going to the Philadelphia Phillies and shoring up their needs at shortstop. I think a, t a guy that's less likely to be moved, but he's been in rumors for the past couple of years, got to be Nolan Arenado. Had another down year, kind of like Lindor, hit 253 and eight home runs. But in the last full season he's played in 2019, hit 41 home runs. So he showed a great prowess with the bat, and he's always had a great glove over at third base. And it's le it's harder to move a guy like Arenado over, over Lindor because he is currently in the middle of an eight-year, $260 million contract that he has seven years left on that contract. He would be 36 years old by the time that contract were to end but the Rockies they haven't had a lot of success with Arenado the, the best year he, they had with him on the team was 2018 they won 91 games but they got swept out of the first round in the NLDS by the Milwaukee Brewers this is still a great offensive weapon to have in your lineup but with a contract it's gonna be hard to move a team would have to give up a lot in order to get him I look for a team like the St. Louis Cardinals if he were to get moved they've always been in the market for an offensive bat they haven't really had one uh, over the past couple of years they really showed how bad they were off offensively in the playoffs in the first round against the San Diego Padres. So I'd look for the Cardinals to move. Maybe the Braves is the wild card since they have lost Josh Donaldson at third base a couple years ago. Haven't really been able to replace him. But again, I don't think he gets moved for now. This offseason just got a new wrinkle as hedge fund manager Steve Cohen takes over ownership of the New York Mets and enters as by, as by far the wealthiest owner in Major League Baseball. What role does he have to play in a hot stove that could be affected by the revenue many teams have lost in 2020? I think there's a big reason why we had the Mets in a majority of our uh, guys pictured here. The Mets are going to be willing to spend, and a guy like Steve Cohen will be willing to spend that money. He's always been a Mets fan. He was from Long Island. He's rooted for the Mets his entire life, and he just wants to see this team win, which is something we can't really say for the Wilpons, who've owned the Mets franchise since 1986. They weren't willing to go out in free agency to try and improve their team, but a guy like Steve Cohen, he wants to win, and I think he will spend a lot of money in free agency. And what a better time for him to take over a team like the Mets. They're at a crossroads this offseason. They didn't make the playoffs, but they have a lot of interesting pieces that could help them contend for future championships. So if they can get a, a, at least one of the guys that we mentioned in our uh, free agency preview, I think the Mets will be in a great position. I think Mets fans have a great future to look forward to with Steve Cohen at the helm. You talk about Cohen being at the helm, and this is going to be a radical change in ownership because, yes, the Mets have been willing to spend money in the past, but look at some of the investments. Johan Santana, Johanna Cespedes, and how many millions of dollars every year gets sent to Bobby Bonilla? I, I lose track, sorry. But the point being, the Mets have had a lot of problematic investments, and I think with Cohen at the helm, you're going to see a radical change in ownership where it's more smart, investing in younger talent. Both Santana and Cespedes were pretty up there in their years when they got signed by the Mets. So perhaps in this offseason where we have talked about a lot of the free agent talent that's available, it's younger, it's sub 30 years old, maybe the Mets invest in a couple of those guys. Real Mudo could be a great place to start, could even be Springer. Either of them could be great start, uh, starting points for the New York Mets. So I look at Cohen taking over this franchise and getting them trending in the right direction. That wraps up our discussion on what should be a very intriguing baseball offseason. We'll be sure to have more coverage of the biggest signings and trades, so keep an eye out for that. I'm Jeremy Gaines. For our analysts, Logan Brandes and Andrew Destin, we thank you for watching this edition of Penn State Sports Night. Thank you for watching this edition of Penn State Sports Night. If you're a fan of our content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more clips. Also, follow us on Twitter at PSSN TV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all my colleagues, we are Penn State Sports Night.